Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Uh, today, the 1st of November, is Nystagmus Awareness Day here in the UK, or Wobbly Wednesday as some people refer to it. It was set up by the Nystagmus Network to raise awareness of the condition. And basically Nystagmus means that your eyes move and shake and wobble, however you want to term it, all the time, involuntarily, you have no control over it. It often comes part and parcel with other conditions, like it does with me, but also people can get it on their own as well without anything else uh, causing it. It has different degrees of severity as well, so in some people it's... Uh, much worse than others. With me, it's relatively mild, I think, compared to many people, but certainly it still has an impact. So to help raise awareness of that, um, I've been tagged by Jessica King, or Jessie LRK, as some people know her, here on YouTube. So thank you very much, Jess, for nominating me. She's set a list of questions, and I'm gonna go through that and give you the answers. I hope you find it interesting and insightful. If you wanna know more about how it affects me, I have also made a video called Living with Nystagmus, um, which you can watch on my channel. So this is just gonna be a very brief uh, set of answers. Let's crack on with it. Question one, are you the only one in your family to have nystagmus? No, my mum has it as well. I inherited uh, my conditions from my mother's side uh, since birth. So yeah, I've always had them since I was born. I've never known any different. Question two, how has your nystagmus affected you throughout your life so far? It's not stopped me living my life. Um, the only major impact so far, I think, is that I can't see things at a distance. I can't maintain focus on signs or any kind of detail. So if I want to see detail or read things, it's only got to be close up or in large print, or I use my monocular, my little telescope, to uh, look at things like signs when I'm out and about. I can't drive um, because I can't uh, maintain a focus on anything at a distance. It means, you know, I can't look at signs and vehicle registration plates and just focus on the road enough and that is basically the effect it has on my life but otherwise it's not stopped me living my life you know i've been able to make friends and have a good education get a job and get out and about and have fun so yeah it's not been a barrier to my life it's just something that i've had to adapt to question three what you registered as are you partially blind severely sight impaired blind etc um, I'm partially sighted, that's how I term myself and that's how I'm registered with my local authority. I also call myself visually impaired as well, um, although it is a very vague term. Some people think that visually impaired means blind. It doesn't. There's a whole spectrum of um, eye conditions. There's another video I made recently for the RNIB for their How I See campaign. Go and watch my video and everyone else is on that campaign because it shows you just what a breadth of eye conditions there are out there and different levels of severities. That's another topic entirely. But then even within nystagmus, people have very, very different conditions and very different levels of sight. So visually impaired is a very all-encompassing term and even partially sighted is really. But partially sighted is how I'm registered uh, with my local authority and how I often tell people that I am visually impaired. But I don't you ever use the term blind because my sight is pretty good. You know, it's by no means perfect, but relative to many other people, um, it is okay. So I don't consider myself to have any kind of blindness at the moment. Question four, do you have any other conditions with your nystagmus? Yes, I have aniridia. That is what caused the nystagmus. Um, aniridia basically means I don't have an iris in my eye, which means my eyes can't control how much light enters my eye. So I'm very sensitive to bright daylight, bright sunlight, glare, and I find it much harder to adjust in the dark as well. I've made a whole video on this called Living with Aniridia. It's kind of like the sister video to my Living with Nystagmus clip. So go and watch that as well if you're interested. But yeah, Aniridia is the other condition that I have. Question five, do you have any visual aids to help you with the condition? Yes, I have my monocular, as I mentioned earlier, a little telescope that I can use to read things at a distance. On my PC and on my phone, I will use the accessibility features uh, to invert the colours because that takes the glare off the screen when it's white on black and I'll also zoom in the screen as well because that helps to kind of make things larger or I'll use large print options if they're there. The phone also has a magnifier built into the camera software which is useful for looking at things. I don't use speech because I don't need to, it's mainly just the magnification or looking things at a distance that I need the help with. Question six, do you have any advice for parents of children with nystagmus? Yeah basically that it's not the end of the world. I know especially if you've never had a child with a disability before, never had a child with nystagmus, it's very concerning, very worrying. You think, oh my God, is my child going to struggle in their life? No, with the right support, no, they'll be fine. You know, especially these days, uh, there's a lot more understanding out there. There's a lot more technology out there. It may be hard to begin with, you know, it'd be hard for you to adjust. It might be hard for the child to kind of adjust and things, but then children have to grow up and learn about the world around them anyway, regardless of whether they've got a sight problem or not. 
It's just that your child will be learning in a slightly different way. They just have to do things slightly differently. But it will be fine as time goes on and your child gets more confident and you get more confident as parents. And you'll keep learning as you go along and your child will adapt because they have to. They'll want to live their life. You'll want them to live their life. So as long as the love and support is there and you help them to get the support they need, you know, use the internet, get the advice and support of the internet as well. There's a lot of information out there. And there's no reason that they can't live a full and happy life. You know, I went on to get a degree. I've got a good social circle. You know, I get out and about a lot. I've got a good job that I've held down for 12 years. There's there's nothing stopping your child from doing well. You just make sure you're there for them and find any other support that they might need as and when they need it. And yeah, they'll be happy. They'll be fine. So don't don't panic about it too much. I know it's scary, but you'll be fine. Your child will be fine. Question seven, describe your vision in three words. Short, shaky, and sensitive, I would say, because it's short sight, shaky, come on, my nice Dagmus, and I'm sensitive to light. So yeah, short, shaky, sensitive, although it is a bit of a tongue twister if you say it quick. Question eight, what help did you get in school and work? Well, I went to a school for the visually impaired, so they naturally had everything I needed there. I could get stuff in large print, I could use uh, the CCTVs to blow things up on the screen there. I could use the tools on the computer to make computers easier to use. So I had everything I needed there uh, technology-wise and the staff worked very closely with us to make sure we were understanding the work and getting everything right and weren't falling behind. So yeah, I had all the help I needed there, uh, thankfully. And then at work, I got into the Access to Work scheme, which is here in the UK, that subsidises software and equipment and travel costs and things like that. So I had the support there from the outset as well. Um, I got a CCTV unit for work, so I could put stuff under it, you know, read stuff on the screen. And I got the software as well uh, to zoom the screen. And I got my uh, travel costs uh, paid for as well. I got taxis to and from work subsidised. So that was really handy, so yeah. I have all the help I needed at work as well. Although I don't travel to work anymore, I work from home, I still have the CCTV, I still have the magnification software, so I still have that support there now. So, yeah, it's great. And that's the end of the questions. I hope you found that interesting. Um, if there's anything you want me to expand on that I haven't spoken about here or in my nice Dagmus uh, video that I made before, then by all means ask away. I'm happy to uh, answer more questions about it. But thank you to Jessica for tagging me. And if anyone else wants to do this, then I tag you as well. If you have nice Dagmus, then you know I tag you automatically. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you find it interesting. Do be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed this. And I will see you for another video very soon. Bye-bye.